let the interview begin. Everyone, hello, everyone, and welcome to the For Love and Odds podcast. I'm here with Dale Freeman. Hi, Dale. Thanks for joining me today. Nice to be here. Appreciate the opportunity. Yeah, you're very welcome. Thanks for joining me. So, um, you actually just give a bit of backstory about what you do and why you started what you're doing. Well, I. Well, ventriloquism and magic and uh, all the kinds of things, but it yeah. all started about the time when I was uh, 10. I was an only child, and so I did an awful lot of talking to myself, kind of roamed the pastures and the hillsides talking to myself. And I was reading a comic book one day, and normally in the back of the comic book when I was a kid is polio warnings about what you're not, not supposed to do to, if you don't want to get polio, you know, you don't... Uh, swim in a public pool you don't get overheated you stay away from people blah 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 yeah and i i knew enough people in iron lungs to where i knew i didn't want polio but then there were all these little ads and one ad was for the great ventrilo okay and and there's an ad with a guy a picture of a guy carrying a big box and a, a voice was coming out of a box saying help me help me help me and it said, amaze your friends and scare your teacher and everything. Order the great Ventrilo. So I ordered the great Ventrilo. And I waited for the great Ventrilo. And I was waiting for a box. Instead, this little envelope showed up, which is a major disappointment of my childhood. <laughs> and I, so I opened it up. And there was this little piece of metal, just about like that. And it, you were supposed to put it on the back of your tongue and kind of a... <gasps> If you did it right, you can make kind of a whistling sound. Okay. Well, I start, but I, I swallowed the great ventrilo. <laughs> so, so then I ordered a second great ventrilo, and I swallowed the second, the third, <laughs> the fourth ventrilo. When I swallowed it, I looked inside the envelope, and I realized there's also a little book on learn ventriloquism. And so I didn't order any more great ventrilos, but yeah. I did read the book. And I taught myself ventriloquism, and so all was well. And that was about simultaneously when my grandfather bought me a Misto Magic set, and I learned a few tricks, and I amused my friends while they were eating lunch at school and all this type of thing. And yeah. one thing led to another. And um, so those two kind of went in a similar path. Uh, the magic part... Uh, there was a time when I did uh, stage shows with the floating woman and the Houdini substitution trunk and had two nine-foot boa constrictors that I wrestled around with that amused the people. Nice. But the problem was you had, uh, you had to have like a truck, you had to have a crew, you had to have all this stuff, and it was very – and I got tired of doing that. And I was getting invitations to do uh, university campuses. And so I said, I can't haul this junk around everywhere I go. And so I, um, I changed my modus operandi. I started doing a, middle, a mentalism show, Close Encounter with the Third Mind, A Journey Beyond the Senses. Uh -huh. And I could put it all in a case that I could carry on a plane with me. And so that took care of that. And simultaneously, I did the ventriloquism, and I started doing shows. And uh, I guess I've been doing ventriloquism uh, off and on for, uh, well, since I was 10 years old. Wow, nice. That's awesome. I, well, uh, I, obviously, as you grew up and grew into the ventriloquism and entertainment world, did you have any inspirations that uh, inspired you to develop your craft? Well, I mean, as far as um, Edgar Bergen would probably be the major one because yeah. he was kind of the king at that time with uh, Charlie McCarthy and Mortimer Snurd and uh, so on and so forth. And he was the primary one initially. And then a little bit later on, we got into uh, uh, others, but uh, Jimmy Nelson and some others. But those were the major ones. I know, it's cool. And you I realize... Go sorry, ahead. No, sorry, no, sorry, it's fine. You, you can speak, go. Well, I I didn't have any much connection. I, I mean, ten, my 10 years on Earth were important because of a lot of reasons. 
uh, the fact that I got into the ventral, but also that's when we got our first TV set. You see, oh, there wasn't there wasn't a TV station <laughs> in the town of forty five thousand people where we lived. There wasn't any TV, and finally a station came on, and they uh, started broadcasting about four o'clock in the afternoon. They broadcast about ten o'clock at night before they went off the air, and uh, I started seeing like the Ed Sullivan Show, uh, Toast of the Town. And I started seeing uh, ventriloquists at work and um, Senor Winces, uh, you wouldn't know that, but uh, anyway, he was a major uh, force at that time. And so I just watched him and learned and practiced and learned and one thing just kept on moving along. Nice, that's really cool to it. And what was your uh, main goal? Where did you want to take your ventriloquism? Well, I was involved in the ministry for most of my life, and so I used ventriloquism and magic an awful lot in that, and uh, on university campuses and then churches and schools. I did a lot of school shows and that type of thing, and so it all kind of intertwined and all kind of worked together as life went on. So yeah. that's what it was about. Cool. And uh, what moments stand out best to you? What would you, you regard as some of your biggest accomplishments or your favorite moments in your career? You're talking about ventriloquism? Uh, in, in the whole entertainment industry. Well, I mean, I had the opportunity to uh, uh, go all over the world and uh, share with thousands of people uh, all over Europe, a lot in uh, the former Soviet Union and so on. And, uh, of course, I was in Great Britain and in Wales. I had a real good time in Wales. Nice. Uh, doing a, a big festival up there uh, and a uh, few other things. Actually, I had a clown ministry. I had a dozen clowns. And so uh, I loaded up 12 clowns and took them halfway around the world to appear at this uh, festival in Wales. And wow. then we we did a bunch of schools there and all that type of thing. And, uh, and so we had a good time there. South America uh had the opportunity to do a lot of universities and so on in uh, 43 states i i have seven states left and i don't think i'm going to make it but 43 states that kept me busy that's not too bad so I just, <laughs> no so i just literally uh spent most of my time uh in the air or in the hotels or going from one place to the other doing that thing that i did whatever that was that's amazing. And what was your favorite place to visit, uh, country or city? Oh, my gosh. I don't know. I loved Africa. Did a lot of work in Tanzania and Kenya and uh, South Africa and Uganda and uh, Tanzania and a bunch of places like that. But loved Africa. Loved the people of Africa. Uh, really, you know... I'll be honest with you. I think that in many ways, uh, Wales was one of my favorites. I hate to go back to that again, but I met so many wonderful people and they were so receptive and uh, had the opportunity to share with uh, hundreds of boys and girls and with families and everything. And so, uh, and I was surrounded by all those clowns and uh, it was a unique experience, if nothing else. When did you um, go to Wales? How long has it been since? I, it's been a long time. It's been, uh, it's been a long time. I can they all flow together at this point, but I was a much younger man than I am now. Let's put okay. it that way. Yeah. And, um, what are you currently working on at the moment? Well, I'm doing, you know, I'm, I can't, I can't fly anymore or do anything like that anymore. And so what I've done, I've, uh, started, uh, working with on TikTok. Okay. And on Facebook, um, I did it primarily initially to amuse and entertain my my grandchildren and to leave myself uh, in body and mind and and voice so that long after I was gone, well, they could show them to their parents and say, look how crazy grandpa was. And they'd all <laughs> gather around and look at crazy old grandpa. And, and uh, but then it started picking up a little bit. I do a totally different thing. Now ventriloquism for the longest time has been basically a, um, 
a comedy routine, sort of like uh, Abbott and Costello or uh, uh, Laurel and Hardy, where you have a straight man and then you have a the one who's not quite that way, and they go back and forth. You know, say hey, this and then say that and say this and say that. Yeah. And you have your your ventriloquial figure, and you say, "Well, how are you doing today? Well, I'm doing pretty good. Well, that's good. Blah 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 blah." Well, now I'm doing these little three minute vignettes a lot of them are kind of weird but uh they all just have a punch and they all just have a uh, and they're not back and forth and back and forth and back and forth it's sometimes the uh figures are giving me a bad time or sometimes i'll bug them a little bit and uh well i just got through with one here about the zombie zombie apocalypse where the zombie apocalypse is finally over and i was there my gas mask and everything and my uh, little uh, friend was there and he had a mask on that looked like a, a zombie and he said well he, if you can't beat them join them so he had kind of given up and we were able to announce the fact that the zombies evidently weren't coming after all and we could take off our masks and we could uh but uh he anyway it's that type of thing just just craziness that's really cool it's really cool that you've got yourself involved with that world it's a new platform that's come quite popular over the past couple of years so it's a great platform to be on yep 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 i'm Uh, probably the oldest man on tiktok i'm gonna start promoting myself that way come ladies and gentlemen see the oldest man on tiktok and they'll all come (laughs) and stare and point and titter and i'll walk around like a hunchback and make faces and it'll be an amusing time for everyone really oh exactly yeah as long as you're making content and you're enjoying it, that's a lot matters, you know. That's right. I just lay awake nights just figuring out whole new ways of doing things. Exactly. If the mountain won't come to Muhammad, then the Muhammad can go to the mountain, and that's just the way it is. Yeah, exactly. And um, outside of the entertainment world, have you got any other interests or anything else you'd like to pursue? Well, I've been involved in film. Uh, I had my own production company for a while, and we made a couple of uh, couple of films. And uh, television, I've developed some, actually I have some television projects uh, in the midst of being uh, worked on. And uh, theater, I've written some plays and produced a few plays. And uh, just you know I, that's all kind of entertainment still but i guess i guess entertainment's more or less where i've been of course yeah point yeah so you know i get that and um i just want to wrap up on one quite final question and that's uh you spoke about your tiktok and you spoke about obviously you're working on a few things what um goals what are your main goals now from this point what do you want to tick off and make sure you get them done tiktok and then anything I do on TikTok goes on the Facebook. And then we're getting ready to launch a uh, YouTube cha- channel. And nice. I'd like to get into that. And I haven't made up my mind about some of the other platforms. We'll just have to see if I live that long. Yeah, well, you seem like a cheery man, you know. Keep your keep content going, so, you know. Yeah. Ah, well, you don't have many options. You're either cheery or you're not. If you're cheery will you live a little longer and if you're not well you may live long but nobody wants to be around you so that's just the way it is that's perfectly said well said <laughs> uh, well thank you for today it's been really cool talking to you and learning about a bit bit more about you so thank you well thank you you're very thank welcome thank you very much hey you're welcome God uh, bless. i'll be sure to let you know when this goes live via facebook so keep a lookout for that and stay tuned for it so thanks a lot keep no up the good work thank you enjoy the rest of your day take care Bye-bye. Bye-bye.